Hey guys, what's going on? This is Far Amazing Adventures, and today in this documentary, I'm going to discuss my trip from Virginia to out west and back in seven days, having visited eight sites. But before we continue, please press that like button, subscribe to this channel, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss out on any of my posts. One month after my trip to Crater Lake National Park and Yellowstone National Park in 2020, I decided to take another road trip from Virginia to out west in seven days. This trip consisted of the Great Sand Dunes, Archers National Park, Fillmore State House, Craters on the Moon, Devil's Tower, Mount Rushmore, Custer State Park, and the Badlands National Park. With all those places I've just mentioned, I visited each of them in seven days and was able to go back to work on time at the end of that week. The first stop of that trip was the Great Sand Dunes National Park, located in Colorado. When I arrived at the Great Sand Dunes, I saw a vast open valley of dunes of sand that was formed by ancient lakes that later on broke loose and left behind massive amount of sand deposits, eventually having pushed into its current location by mighty winds. Here people come and see these incredible dune formations and its surrounding landscape and of course sand surf. There he goes. I never attempted to sand surf. Who knows, maybe next time. I wasn't at the Great Sand Dunes that long, but I was there enough to snap great photos and shoot a great video. After my brief time at the Great Sand Dunes, I went back on the road again. Later, I crossed into Utah, leaving Colorado, and as I was beginning my trip into Utah, I headed south and decided to visit Archers National Park. Archers National Park is a place full of wonder. Here in this park, there's a lot of natural formations and a lot of natural occurrences that made a lot of these canyons, valleys, riverbeds of extinct rivers, and of course, a whole lot of arches that are part of this park system. This is an example of an extinct river where an old river once flowed, leaving behind a riverbed trail. Also, I found traces of petrified salt deposits.
Besides the extinct river beds, there is a valley full of giant rock formations that were carved out and formed by water when the whole Midwest was covered by a sea channel at one time. As you can see in this video that I shot, you can get an idea how big Archers National Park is. One of the well-known rock formations in this park is a formation called Balance Rock. The total height of this rock is 128 feet. Balance Rock had a smaller version of itself beside it known as Chip Off the Old Block, which toppled over in the winter of 1975 to 1976. Out of the many archers at Arches National Park, I only went to four since I was pressed for time. One of them was Sand Dune Arch. After Sand Dune Arch, next was Broken Arch. After visiting Broken Arch, I went back to my vehicle and drove a little bit down the road till I stopped at my next arch which would be Skyline Arch. Originally, Skyline Arch was smaller until 1940. A large portion of a boulder fell out, making the arch wider. So finally the fourth arch I saw was Delicate Arch. For this arch, I had to hike up a big hill, through some rocky paths, and up near cliffs. Which at the bottom of these cliffs, I saw canyons that too had arches in their walls. And this is Delicate Arch, the most famous and iconic formation of all Archers National Park. Also, Delicate Arch is one of the most recognized and iconic natural landmarks in the world. Standing at an impressive height of 52 feet, Delicate Arch is a freestanding arch that attracts thousands upon thousands of visitors per year. Also, Delicate Arch attracts a lot of photographers from all over the United States and even from other countries. After my descent from the hill where Delicate Arch was perched at, I snapped a few photos of more arch-like structures, then I finally left. The day after leaving Arch National Park, I came to a small town of Fillmore, Utah. Here in Fillmore, there is a historical landmark known as Territorial State House State Park or the Fillmore State House. Fillmore was briefly Utah's first capital along with the State House till later on it was moved to Salt Lake City.
Okay, that wraps this video up. If you love to travel and are an adventure seeker, please press that like button, subscribe to my channel, and share. This concludes part one of my western road trip of the year 2020. Stay tuned for part two.